Hi there, I'm Shauna Kwan, Managing Director of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy at the Governor's Office of Energy Development. I'm here today to teach you a little bit about energy efficiency in winter. I'm joined by the OED team here. And as they get started on this 100-year-old home, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about energy efficiency in homes and buildings. Homes and buildings can contribute about 40% of the emissions into our air shed, resulting in some issues with air quality. Most people don't realize that heating and cooling is about 50 to 70% of a home's energy consumption. So that's the best place to start when you're talking about energy savings. So let's go ahead and get started. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Shauna. I just finished installing a smart thermostat in this house. That's great, and smart thermostats are such a simple way to get energy savings right away when you're heating or cooling your home. And in fact, smart thermostats can save homeowners about 10% on their energy bills every year. So talk to me about the smart thermostat. Now what makes this thermostat smart is its ability to learn how you use temperature in your home, track your energy usage, and be remotely controlled from your phone or tablet. And a common misconception with thermostats or smart thermostats is a homeowner comes home and they crank it up because they think it's going to heat up the home faster, when in fact it won't, it'll add more stress to your equipment. Which will waste a lot of energy. Well, and there's so many different models and types of smart thermostats that a homeowner can go out, find what works best for them, install it, and start saving energy and money right away. I'm going to go see what Annie's up to. All right, sounds good. Hey Annie, so what are you doing? Hey Shauna, I'm just insulating this light switch over here. And it's so important because these type of openings, the ones that are on exterior walls, can often let in drafts. And so when you're heating this room, you're still getting all this cold air coming in and you end up having to use even more energy to keep the room warm. Yeah, I can actually feel a draft if I put my hand right up to it. You can actually use a thermometer to gauge what the temperature is on the inside of the plate. And here it's about 58 degrees and compare that to the wall, which we're seeing is about 63 degrees. So can you show me how the switch sealer works? Sure, yeah. So it's just a matter of taking it out of the package and installing it right on the back of the plate. It's very simple. It costs less than a dollar. Anyone can do it. It's very affordable. Thank you so much, Annie. Let's go check out what Guy is doing. Sounds great. Hey Shauna, I'm just prepping this window for caulking. Air leakages are one of the leading causes of energy loss in the home, and caulking is one way to prevent that. Mm -hmm. But before you fix any leaks, you have to find them. So homeowners have a lot of resources available to them if they want to find air leakages. At night, you can take a flashlight and go to your doors and windows, and if you see any gaps where that light shines through, that's a great way to find those leaks. Rocky Mountain Power and Dominion Energy also provide programs for homeowners that need to find air leakage. Rocky Mountain Power has an at-home toolkit that they can use, and Dominion Energy will send a professional out to go and find those air leakages in your home. So let's go caulk this window. These are the materials that we need. First, we need a rag, scissors, caulk, a caulking gun, and a bowl of water. After you've cleaned off the window, you want to take your scissors and you want to cut at the very top of the caulk. The further down you cut, the bigger the bead's going to be. I don't need a very big one, so I'm going to cut here at the top. And then I'm going to insert this poke down the nozzle, and this is to puncture the seal. Now I'm going to load it into the caulk gun. Slowly begin at a 45 degree angle at the top of the window, because that's how you can get most steady. Take my time, no reason to rush, and I'm going to follow down the window. As a last step, I'm going to dip my finger in the water and follow the same caulk that I just laid down. And caulk's such a flexible material, so if you don't like the color or anything, you can paint right over it and you can make it match anything you want. Well, thanks so much, Guy. I'm going to go outside and see what Bergen's doing. Hey, Bergen. Hey, Shauna. Right now I'm just working on weather stripping. Oh, that's great. I was just talking about air sealing with Annie and Guy downstairs. So why don't you show me how the weather stripping's working out? And so what I did was measure the length of the door and then went and bought my materials. And there's many different kinds of weather stripping that you can get, but I chose to get this one that has the adhesive side so it's easy to install. So when you go to install, make sure the door is shut tight and you'll want to make sure that the area is wiped clean. And then when you go to put on the weather stripping, you'll make sure the rubber part is tight into the corner and you'll remove the adhesive and then you'll stick it onto the door just like that to prevent any air leaks from getting in there. Well, thanks so much, Bergen. I'm going to go see what Megan's doing downstairs. All right, thank you, Shauna. Hey, Megan, what you doing? 
oh, hey, Shauna, so I'm just insulating the pipes on our hot water heater. Now, this is important because if you feel the temperature of the pipe, it's actually a lot warmer than the surrounding air. And we all know that that air is just going to continue to get colder and colder and colder as winter approaches. So wrapping some nice insulation around that pipe makes sure that that heat doesn't escape. This means that we save energy and it means that we also save water because we're not going to have to run that water over and over and over again in the wintertime, just hoping that it gets hot. Before you go to the store, you want to measure the length as well as the circumference of the copper pipe mm -hmm. so you know the exact length as well as the width that you're going to need. And there are actually two different types of insulation once you get there. Here's one, and if you open it up, you notice it doesn't have any adhesive on it. So if you get this type, you're going to want to ensure that you have the fireproof duct tape to wrap around it. Uh, this type, it actually actually comes with some self-adhesive strips. So you peel that off, super slick, fit it around, crimp it together, you're good to go. Once you get home, you just slip it on, grip it around, and really such a simple thing that makes a difference in the winter time. And really ensuring that a hundred year old home like this one is energy efficient and nice and tight. And for some of our homeowners that want to take a more advanced step, they can do further insulation like we've done here on the ceiling. So that helps ensure that first floor stays nice and warm in the winter time. Exactly. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for joining us and come on back in spring when we've got a new video for you. In the meantime, check out our website at energy.utah.gov for more tips and tricks.